Hey there, welcome to WordPress Accessibility Today. My name is Carrie Dills and I'm a freelance WordPress developer and instructor. And thank you for joining us for the alt scene, when and how to write alternative text with Meg Mimi Miller. They're the lead developer and accessibility specialist for Accessicart. Growing up building computers and gaming, tech has been a major part of their life since childhood. Having also grown up with a disabled sister, they found themselves also drawn to others with disabilities throughout life. Web accessibility is not a trend or a fear of a lawsuit for Mimi, but a logical collision of two lifelong passions. They will continue to fight, learn, educate, and aggressively nag until website accessibility becomes an industry standard. Please feel free to add your questions in the Q&A tab in Slido, and we'll answer them at the end of the session. And you can use the ideas section to chat with other attendees. Welcome, Mimi. Hi. Uh, OK, there we go. Uh, what an amazing lineup we've had today. Um, and I'm really, really happy to be here. Um, welcome to the alt scene, when and how to write good alternative text. Regardless of what stage of your accessibility journey you're on, alt text will play a consistent role from websites to social media, emails, and social apps like Discord and Slack. Alt text plays a huge role in ensuring your content is accessible to everyone. But there's a difference between just writing alt text and writing good alt text. And you'll have a better of the difference. Uh, as Carrie already said, I'm Meg Mimi Miller. Um, what, what she didn't mention is I have five animals, three of which are cats. And uh, you'll probably see one jumping up here trying to help me advance my slides. Uh, the other thing is, is I have to be honest with you guys, I have been uh, on the precipice of a migraine all week, so I apologize in advance if it takes me a little bit longer to kind of refocus on my presentation here. Um, but let's get started. So what is alternative or alt text? On a semantic level, alt text is the manual description of an image. Uh, this tells automated software like screen reader users and search engine crawlers what the image depicts. Sometimes alt text is pretty simple and other times it can be a little bit more complex and open-ended. Uh, for example, I intentionally chose a mini comic here to illustrate just how open-ended it can be. Uh, I have my alt text uh, for this comic up on the screen here, which says a four panel comic captions read, I'm always getting stuck in my head, so I'm trying to make it a nice place to be. Credit worry lines. Art description. A person's head with a space and smaller version of themselves drawn in the empty head space, uh, their head self. Uh, in the first panel, the person has a neutral expression. The head self starts getting gradually more comfortable in the space until they are snuggled up reading a book in the final panel. The person is smiling pleasantly in the final panel. I went for an overall description of the comic. However, effective alt text could be a panel by panel description. I also feel it's important in many cases similar to this to present the text first and describe the image after. This is a really lengthy chunk of alt text. And while this method doesn't provide as much suspense or anticipation, it allows a screen reader user to decide if they wanna hear the description of the image or move on after they've obtained the actual information. And this is also an example of how alt text is just as much of a reflection of the writer as the image they've chosen is. So why is alt text so important? If an image is worth a thousand words, why is it important to still try and describe that image in less than 200 characters? First and foremost, alt text describes an image to screen reader users. While we are going to focus primarily on users who are visually impaired, a broad variety of people use screen readers. Some users with cognitive learning and motor disabilities, for example. When a screen reader lands on an image, the alt text will be read out loud to them, which provides context to those users. It's also important for search engine optimization or SEO. Search engine crawlers index image through their alt text and categorize it as additional content relative to the information presented on the page. So if there were two websites with identical information down to the word, um, 
but one of them had alt text and one didn't, the one with alt text would rank higher in search engines because it would be considered to have more content than the other. Alt text can also be useful circumstantially. There could be any number of reasons a web page won't load properly, like a slower internet connection or occasionally landing on a website at the exact time a server backup is running. When images won't load, you may see that little icon with the text next to it, and that's the alt text. So alt text can still be circumstantially beneficial for any user who simply happens to land on your site at the wrong time. The ultimate purpose of alt text is to provide the same context to a visually impaired user as an image would a sighted user. Imagine listening to a baseball game on the radio. Remember the radio. Uh, but instead of describing the game, Harry Carey just sat silently for three hours. Finally, at the end, he says, the Cubs just won the World Series. Thanks for tuning in. Would you feel robbed of the experience? Would you have the ability to imagine every inning um, in perfect detail? Um, sorry, I lost. Uh, or would you prefer Harry's enthusiastic play-by-plays, uh, whose energy would reflect the mood of the stadium every minute of the game, making you feel like you were there? All text is to website assets as sports broadcasters are to games, and that same purpose should be reflected. I also feel like all text is a good opportunity for you to judge your own content. A good example, anyone who knows me knows I struggle to ramble. A while back, I was trying out a new art program and made a quick comic. I uploaded it to Twitter and realized a million different ways I could have worded a comic better and made it uh, more accessible as I maxed out Twitter's 1000 character alt text limit. If you find yourself struggling with your alt text, it could be a good opportunity for you to ask yourself if the assets you're using are relevant to your content or if you did the best job possible when created in your, creating your own media. Now let's talk about what alt text isn't for. Alt text is not a place to embed keywords or tags into your poster page. I still see this all the time. As people are more familiar with the concept of SEO, content creators are looking for every possible opportunity to bump the ratings. Alt text is not the place to do that. It has an actual purpose. And as accessibility has become more and more in demand, uh, pra this practice can actually lower your accessibility or your SEO ranking. It's also not a good excuse to continue putting words and images, but we will elaborate on that a little bit more later. Alt text is also not an excuse to provide additional content that cited users wouldn't have. This includes important information, image credits, or irrelevant jokes. I see this a lot, especially on social media. Someone will have a group photo and add something silly and snarky that isn't actually relevant to the image, and it's often passive aggressive statements like good thing so and so wasn't there. It's one, it, it, it's one thing to be funny or creative with your alt text if it's relevant to the image, but it really defeats the purpose if you're treating it like your middle school diary. As web accessibility is still being figured out, there are a lot of standards that are still up in the air, and that's okay. After all, those who benefit from accessibility are humans who have different opinions and thought processes. So in my opinion, I don't think things like alt text can be universally standardized because we're not creating websites for robots. So these are my alt text myth opinions, some of which you may not agree with or have heard con uh, contradicting instructions for. Myth one, alt text should always be objective and avoid making interpretations. I believe there's a time and a place for both. Objective alt text should revolve around products and data. This is when you don't want to influence your user's thinking. You shouldn't be trying to set a mood when describing data or a product, but describing it objectively and allow your users to come to their own conclusions. Subjective options are things like paintings, food, and animals. These photos are usually intended to evoke a feeling, and it will depend on the alt text to reinforce that to someone who can't see the image. If you're running a food blog and have a photo of a taco, you're probably going to want to emphasize how delicious it looks because that's the purpose of that photo. Animals are highly subjective and used for a variety of purposes. If you're writing an article about your cat, then yeah, you may want to state in your alt text, my super adorable cat. And that is subjective. I know it's hard to believe, but not everybody thinks cats are cute. I'm not one of those people, but I know they're out there. 
Alternatively, if you're writing an article on animal abuse and you're using an image of a dog leaning up against a kennel wall, then you'll probably use more subjective language like sadly to emphasize the intention of this photo. Myth number two, everybody's favorite. Blind people aren't my company's demographic, so we don't need alt text. Every accessibility specialist out there has heard this before, and it's extremely lazy. One, as we've already stated, more than just those who are blind use screen reader users or screen readers. Uh, but for the sake of this argument, let's discuss blindness. Two, there's not a consistent analytical way to, to detect screen reader usage or how it's being used on a website. Three, it's extremely short-sighted. Let's talk about a completely hypothetical company with a loyal demographic of absolutely no visually impaired users. Somehow, not even a single person wears glasses or contacts. Well, one of them tomorrow gets into an accident or falls ill or turns 30, and now suddenly their vision is permanently affected. They still want to spend money on your website, but you haven't set it up for them to be able to. The demographic argument is never valid. If there are people out there who are blind and hunting, and there are with adaptive scopes, then I'm sure there are visually impaired users trying to buy your basketball shorts or exotic coffee beans. Myth three, alt text takes too long. Despite this talk practically being an amateur creative writing course, alt text does not need to be that hard. Sometimes it's as easy as yellow chapstick. I mean, that, that's a super easy one, but you know what I mean. It doesn't have to be that hard. Myth four, every single image requires alt text. Decorative images do not require alt text, but we will talk about that later. Myth five. You shouldn't include descriptions only non-visually impaired people will understand, like color. This hot take is probably one of the most contested. Um, personally, I don't think people should shy away from mentioning something like color. Uh, it, it still adds to a user's mental picture. While describing something like color may not add or take away from the experience of a user who has been blind since birth, uh, it could potentially add to the experience of a user who was sighted for a period of their life or who's still partially sighted and provide additionally additional context um, for any user who utilizes alt text. I do realize this is a contested topic, so this may be something you have to decide what you're comfortable with yourself. Myth six, you never need alt text if you have a caption in your photo or if your photo has a caption. Captions and alt text generally have different purposes. If your caption is actually describing the image, then no, you don't need alt text. That's, that would be redundant. Um, however, image captions are generally cutesy, like beach day, date night, yay. Um, and that does not effectively describe an image. Uh, whether it's on your website or on social media, your images will more often than not require alt text. On this slide is an array of Polaroid-esque images that are completely blank with little strips of tape on some of their corners. Um, as I've mentioned, I, I don't think all text uh, universal standards are written in stone. However, there are some generally agreed upon best practices. Avoid starting off your, your alt text with a picture of or an image of. Since screen readers announce what the element is um, in my uh, um, graphic element, you know, this is repetitive. Uh, there are exceptions to this when you're describing the medium though, like comic, painting, uh, digital art. Uh, this provides context. Use proper grammar, spelling, and simple language. Oh, I mixed those up. And avoid acronyms. Uh, this is all about creating effective description uh, and descriptive alt text. For example, if a screen reader user hops to an image and an acronym hasn't been defined yet, you can leave a user with more questions than an answers. And alt text should be all about answering questions and not creating more. Think of the image as an independent entity and also try to avoid special characters like ampersands. These practices will ensure screen reader users and search engine crawlers identify the image as accurately as possible. 
try to avoid one word alt text. It is rarely descriptive enough. There are some cases like icons, a one word alt text description could be sufficient, but almost never when we're talking about an actual image or photo. This also doesn't help your SEO. Well, the ideal length of alt text is 125 characters. Uh, there will, and this, 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 the character count actually kind of changes all the time. Anytime you Google ideal character count, it kind of changes, shifts all the time. Um, but there's always going to be unavoidable exceptions to this. A more complex image may require more alt text. Uh, but it, the important thing is to keep it in mind, be considerate of people's time, and try to stick to what is most important about the image. Um, and, and, and there will always be exceptions to this. For example, NASA has been releasing new images of the solar system from the James Webb te uh, Space Telescope. Uh, they've diligently been adding alt text to each photo, and their character counts average five to 700 characters. But if their social media manager was terrified of going into detail because they'd go over 125 characters while describing space, um, screen reader users would miss out on that experience. Some images just demand more descriptions than others. So when do you add alt text? The short answer is almost every time you use an image. However, decorative images do not require alt text. One of the biggest accessibility loopholes I see people trying to create is, well, technically, aren't all images descriptive or uh, decorative? And no, they're not. People use images for a reason. They add context, evoke a feeling, and sometimes give instructions. These are not decorations, but content. And that content needs to have a description that would provide the same context to a visually impaired user as it would a sighted user. I have two examples up on the screen, a non-decorative a, a non image and a decorative image. My non-decorative image is a of a cat. Talking right and looking at the fourth wall. Pretty cute. Using this image would create a cozy sense of curiosity on someone's personal blog or provide a warmer aesthetic to a shelter site. This image is intended to add something to the site. It needs alt text. Uh, additionally, an image like this would be it would probably re be relevant to the blog's content, either of the page or the entire blog, so the alt text would benefit the site's SEO. In my decorative column, I have a floor de lis This is a decorative object probably used in a background or a small accent somewhere. Something like this, or patterns, squirrels, uh, background images that aren't necessarily intended to be seen at all, um, like with a really dark overlay. This would be considered decorative and not require alt text unless it was actually being used for a specific purpose. Um, for example, my floor de lis in my slides actually does have alt text because it, I'm intentionally using it for this purpose. Um, but my little sparkle graphics that I have in the top of my slides, they don't have alt text because they're decorative. Um, the purpose of making an image decorative, either on your website or a document or PowerPoint slides is to not waste a screen reader's time with superfluous image or graphics because it isn't uh, that isn't relative <sighs> that isn't relevant to uh, the content um, or becomes repetitive if it's used every single time. Imagine going through these slides using a screen reader and hearing Sparkle graphic every single time. Um, but just like with my Florida Lee, that decorative definition will change depending on the content you're working on. Oops. Uh, the image on the slide is um, a grid array of sample logo concepts, all with lorem ipsum and filler text. Uh, while logos themselves are excluded from accessibility requirements uh, in the design sense, they do still require alt text. As a static image, the alt text should be organization name logo, as in your organization name, not literally organization name. If there's a small subline or tagline in the logo or any text at all, that should also be included with any abbreviations or acronyms spelled out in full. Uh, usually you'll see EST est, uh, for estimated um, or established. And so you would want the alt text to say company logo established 1957 or whenever your year was. If you're using a logo cloud, ideally these will be individual files with proper alt text for each company. 
it's not uncommon to see a logo cloud that is one single JPEG or image and the alt text for these ranges from listing out every single company logo using commas or separators or simply a collection of client logos. I'm serious. I've seen that. Don't do that. It should, uh, if you're, if you're, um, if you have a logo in your main menu, the alt text should be what we just, uh, what we just discussed. However, if your logo is a common practice, uh, link back to the homepage, then you're going to want it to be website name home because that infers its destin, uh, uh, um, its destination. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in our next slide. Image links. Personally, I completely avoid links and I discourage my content or my clients to do so. Um, I would much rather prefer to use images that add to users experience rather than give them a game of hide and seek, trying to figure out which images are links and which aren't. Especially in cases uh, like WordPress, where some content creators make the image file the default image link. This can be extremely confusing and cause users to prevent clicking on any images with a link as they'd assume it just opened the image's media file. I don't like mixing content like this because I feel like it doesn't create a predictable experience in one way or another. For example, a website I, aud I audited once had one of those featured on logo arrays we just talked about. Something I didn't realize until I began keyboard testing was the logo array was actually a link to the press release page. And in this case, it kind of excludes non-keyboard users who may not even realize this is a link unless they interacted with the image. And that's just something somebody casually scrolling down a page is unlikely to do. In cases of featured image links on blog posts, uh, an argument can be made, even if the image also links to the blog post, it can be the image's alt text if there is an alternative um, clearly labeled link like the, like the blog post title. This seems to be a case of personal preference amongst the community, uh, with some people not caring about the redundancy and others preferring the image not be a link at all. I like the image as a link because they're usually a larger clicking area that gives people with mobility issues a larger target. Um, but I also understand the issue of redundancy. This is one of those fun accessibility gray areas that doesn't currently have a 100% solid best practice answer uh, because somewhere, someone somewhere has to compromise. Um, I've seen some people use Aria hidden on a blog post image, and I'm not really sure how I feel about that. It's, you know, this is just kind of providing information of the, of the landscape right now. Um, it's just generally not best practice to hide uh, user elements from a screen reader user. Uh, but I'm sure in, uh, I'm sure the standards will change in the upcoming years. Uh, but at this moment, this practice is still up in the air. Um, primarily, I see image links that are text-based. I discourage this practice with every accessible fiber in my body. Unlike standard text, rendered text on images can't be programmatically adjusted to become more readable. And often it's using a script or display font and a low contrast color combination that makes it difficult to read. And I still see this all the time. Uh, for example, the image on the slide says read more about me and it's using hard to read fonts and colors. The about is not only cursive, but the blue has a lower contest ratio, while the read more, if you can even see that at all, has a 1.5 to 1 contrast ratio against the background. This is potentially unreadable and can't be converted because it's rendered text. For this reason, text on images, especially when they're intended as a link, should be avoided completely. All right, my e-commerce friends, I have a lot to say on product images. We're going to be on this slide for a couple minutes. Some of the biggest alt text whoopsies I see are on product images. Most of the time, they're long file names, which helps no one, including your SEO. And if there are multiple angles of the product, it's just repeatedly the file name. So what makes for good product alt text? That highly depends on the product. But you want to visually describe it in a way that is actually useful while reducing repetition and keeping it as pithy as possible. On this slide, we have an image. On this slide, we have an image of an orange couch. The couch is our product. So how do you describe this couch to someone who can't see it? What would be the selling points? When you read an actual product description, 
they rarely include components e-commerce owners generally assume would be visually deduced. A good example of a small detail that could be included here uh, is the, I forgot to do something, sorry. Um, a good example of a small detail that could be included here is the gap under the couch. I have three cats. I do not want a couch that has a gap underneath it because it's just asking to be clawed in the ankles um, or to come across a horde of hair ties one day. So ideally, a detail like this would be provided in the alt text because it can be an important detail to someone. The back of this couch is very low. My partner is very tall. If we were going to buy a new couch, we'd have to make sure it had a high back to support his torso. But that may not necessarily be described in the product description. What else could be important? Potential deal breakers. This is a two cushion couch. Maybe a shopper would prefer a three cushion. Do those pillows come with the couch? Which is something hopefully mentioned in the product description. This couch is very rectangular and modern as opposed to curvy and traditional. These are examples of things we can immediately deduce visually that we take for granted. Usually products have a primary image and this will probably be the most descriptive because it's probably the first image that a user would land on. Uh, in this case, I would describe this, this couch as modern plush orange leather couch. Back support and armrests are about the same height with the low back about three inches higher. Two seat cushions, two back cushions, about a five inch gap between the floor and the couch. Couch support base is a matching color wood base about two inches high and feet are cylindrical, cylindrical shaped light wood, wood pegs. It's lengthy, but it provides enough information for a user to get a good idea of what the product looks like while hopefully being supported with actual dimension specs in the product description. If there's another angle of the couch provided, think of what new information may be revealed. Uh, does the side of the couch come with a remote holder? Or maybe there are cup holders in the arms that we can't see from straight on. Additionally, as we touched on earlier, product images are best kept objective. You can use some subjective adjectives like soft or high quality, because even if not everyone agrees with that description, it may contribute to a more accurate description of the product. But avoid subjective language like comfortable or stunning that may try to influence the user's thoughts on a product that may not be universally applicable. But it's really, uh, uh, you don't, you also don't need to get caught up in the details. Uh, for example, I call this couch orange, but it's really more of a honey amber color. Colors are some of the most subjective interpretations out there, and no two people will see the color the same way. So getting caught up in fancy language or specifics to tr describe a single color can just be a waste of time and sometimes confusing, regardless of how accurate it is. Have you heard some of the names of Pantone colors? Would you know what exuberance is? P.S. It is basically the color of this couch. Consider your variables also. Remember, many people with disabilities are still independent people. Uh, how about a hypothetical scenario that could literally occur between any set of partners? Maybe a visually impaired user like the description of the couch, but knows their non-visually impaired uh, partner has a general color scheme going on in the living room. Uh, our visually impaired user wants to text or email a picture of the couch to their partner after hearing one of the variables is within the color scheme of the living room. By providing a variable color within the alt text, you can instill confidence that a visually impaired user is downloading the correct version of the image or sending the right link. By taking the extra few seconds it takes to provide the alt text, you are allowing a huge group of people to navigate your store confidently and independently, and that's huge and puts you ahead of the pack, considering there is still a lot of major online e-commerce e stores failing to do this. If you are an e-commerce owner who is concerned about your own alt text, I have an experiment for you to try. Ask someone for help, like your partner, family member, or friend. Then go to a furniture store or department call them and describe an item. Let them ask questions. Once you're content with your description, send them a photo of the item you're describing and see if their mental picture matched up with the item. The other person can then tell you if your description was accurate or where you could have done better. Repeat this with a few items. 
of course you can try you could choose any store you want i just find that furniture stores have the largest variety of complex shapes and differences for you to practice with i do know it sounds a bit silly but it wouldn't take that much time five minutes per item maybe um, and I think you'd be surprised with how much you learn about describing your own products and the questions you need to answer in your alt text. So let's quickly go through some examples of alt text uh, on different kinds of images. Um, given the time, uh, we're going to kind of go into detail on our easy and then kind of fly, kind of speed through the rest. Uh, on this picture, uh, or on the slide, there's a picture of a white cat with a tiny terry cloth uh, towel wrapped around its head, like someone would do when they got out of the shower. It's in some sort of ceramic bowl and is resting its head on the rim and looking directly at the camera. And if I had to describe the look on its face, I'd say it's pretty fed up with the photo shoot. Um, so our bad examples is cat. This is a callback to our one word alt text. And I assure you, there's a lot more going on in this image than what can be discerned with just the word cat. And spot A, here's another callback to our captions. Captions are for being cute. Alt text is for being specific. Um, our OK alt text is a cat with a towel on its head. This isn't super descriptive, but it's enough to get the point across, and it's better than no alt text at all. Great alt text. A white cat with golden eyes and a small towel wrapped around its head, sitting in a ceramic bowl with its head resting on the rim, looking directly at the camera. If it's not super important for the context of the image, it's okay to make intuitive leaps. For example, I have no idea what kind of container this cat is sitting in. There's ridges on it, which remind me of pottery. So in my interpret interpretation, I say ceramic bowl. But for all I know, that's a vase or a hamper. You don't need to be so worried about maybe getting a detail wrong uh, that you cave under your own pressure. We can also remove some words for the sake of time and efficiency. Details that can be changed or removed while retaining integrity, eye color, ceramic, looking directly at the camera. I like adding things like looking directly at the camera slash fourth wall uh, because I feel like it sets a mood. People looking up in photos generally implies wonder and imagination like a person looking up at the sky or a kid looking at their parent. Looking by sad, looking to the side context, can imply sadness or curiosity. Directly at the audience imply, can imply annoyance or confidence, and in some cases, seduction. Um, depending on the context, adding those details could add an entire range of mood to your image. But if you feel like you're running too long with your alt text, it could be something that is excluded for the sake of efficiency. More considerations that can, that can change alt text. The reason you're using this image, and we're gonna talk about that a lot. Um, it, it should be reflected in your alt text, especially if it's more relevant to the content of the page it's on. For example, my alt text for this photo is a general description. But if this photo was on a satirical post about dressing up cats, it may be more important to focus on the cat's somewhat annoyed expression rather than go into details about what kind of bowl it's in. The image on this page is a beautiful painting. Uh, the canvas is primarily focused on a huge intimidating dragon. Um, below it is a lone soldier standing on the edge of the cliff holding a sword and staring up at the dragon who's exhaling a small stream of fire in the soldier's direction. The background is a dark stormy sky with a large ray of sunlight penetrating the clouds. You can see several other dragons soaring in the background illuminated by the sun ray. An image like this is completely open for interpretation as most art is. So everyone would have a different idea of what the alt text would be. And that's okay, it's part of the fun of art. It's intended to evoke different feelings for different people. And depending on which day you upload this, you could feel more like the dragon or more like the soldier, and that would change the interpretation, which would affect your alt text. <laughs> Something I also didn't notice until the 10th time I looked at this painting is there's actually a writer on top of the dragon. I can actually go. Um, so is the writer there to fight the soldier or help him? I'm going to go like that. Um, Maybe he's there to pick him up like a dragon uber. What is the intention of this photo? And 
how this painting is described likely depends on who is presenting it. With art being subjective and interpretive in and of itself, having subjective alt text based on the writer's interpretation is only going to be natural. And that's part of the joy is reading everybody else's interpretation. I would love to see this painting up on a blog post with alt text written by 10 different people. I think that would be amazing, uh, but that's just me. On this slide, there's a pie chart labeled the best movies ever. The pie slivers do not include percentages, so the data is completely universal, uh, completely visual, and assumptions would be made based on visually observing the sizes of the slivers. Um, one of the, the, I noticed too late that one of the titles is messed up, but um, the titles were supposed to say Waiting for Forever, The, the Naked Gun, The Boondock Saints, A Scanner Darkly, Moulin Rouge, and Pirate Radio. Charts and graphs require special attention when creating alt text. And in my experience, they're also some of the most overlooked, skipped, or even overwhelming examples of alt text when they really don't need to be. The thing is, if you have the graph, then you already have the data you need for the alt text. But providing too much information or unnecessary information is a quick way to make the data lost on your readers. As you can see in my unnecessarily long example of bad alt text that I'm not going to bore you with. It's just a bad example. That's too long. This is a tiny graph. For some data, I have seen alt text that states the lowest end of the data results. This is in my OK section. Um, and the highest end, leaving the middle ground open for interpretation. If this is a, a casual chart, you know, I don't know, something you'd see on BuzzFeed poll results, uh, this could be considered OK alt text, as long as all of the data types were listed at some point. Uh, if we're talking about important data or statistics, I wouldn't risk uh, any sort of inference and would stick to something like our great example, which says a pie chart illustrating poll results for the best movies, The Naked Gun, 30%, The Boondock Saints, 25%, Moulin Rouge, 15%, Pirate Radio, 15%, A Scanner Darkly, 10%, Waiting for Forever, 5%. Just straight to the point. But that all being said, the number one rule for making a chart or graph accessible has nothing to do with the alt text, but a supportive di description directly pre or preceding the graph. Not doing this is an extremely common form of human error. And that's being so familiar with a concept or of data results that you forget the people you're explaining it to may not have the subject grasped as well as you do. It's no different than letting a kid cook with you while you give them instructions, only for them to ask what folding an egg means. You've done it so many times and it's so simple to you, you may have momentarily forgotten that someone else isn't familiar with the process of egg folding. This is why supportive a supportive description of a graph or chart explaining the data and results is so important. And that's not just for your visually impaired or cognitively impaired users, but for all of your users. Alt text is becoming an available feature on major platforms every day, but it's up to the uploader to utilize it. Obviously, I can't tell you every single place alt text is available on, uh, but whenever you upload an image somewhere, try looking for an edit button or some sort of alt text, uh, or if some sort of alt text button isn't immediately available. My image on this slide is a screenshot of a Gmail composition. As pictured, when you focus on the embedded image, the toolbar has an option to edit alt text. However, in cases like Slack and Discord, you have to hunt a little and edit the file's details in a little modal, which can sometimes be a little bit hard to find. I highly encourage users to implement alt text, even if they're confident the recipients aren't visually impaired. For example, I run a Discord server, uh, and it, it contains a small group of friends I know personally. And I know none of them need alt text at the moment, but I still like adding alt text to my images because it's good practice. Uh, the more you do something, the more second nature it becomes, and soon the simple act of adding an image description doesn't become such an enormous undertaking, but it's just a good habit that is naturally part of your process that you eventually don't even think about anymore. And in my opinion, a huge part of web accessibility is future-proofing for everyone. Similar to an example we provided early on, how embarrassing would it be for a content creator to ignorantly disregard accessibility and deem it unnecessary, and then be unable to use their own website if they became disabled one day? 
And the fact is, be it due to aging, an illness, or an accident, most people will develop an ex a disability of some sort at some point in their life. And when, if, when or if this happens to one of my friends on the Discord server, I like the idea that they can still feel included in my channel under any circumstances. On this slide, we have an image of a man in beard uh, with a beard and glasses smiling at the camera and giving a thumbs up. Um, and we're going to sum it all up with a few key takeaways uh, to consider when writing your alt text. Is the alt text you've written indicative of the reason the image was chosen? And this I've repeated this a few times, but it's just really important to me. Um, alt text is the same. Uh, alt text for the same image could be different depending on the context, as we've discussed with the cat earlier. And this may not always be true to the literal image and will rely on subtext as opposed to context. A good example of intentions is like any other 32 year old adult. I love watching Pokemon on Amazon Prime. If you've ever watched Pokemon before, you know that with few exceptions, Pokemon such as Pikachu only say their name. So if the captions were gonna be literal, they would read Pika Pika Pikachu. And that's not helpful despite it being literal. What Amazon Prime does instead is use the caption for intention. So they will say something like determined, angry, annoyed, or joyful, depending on what Pokemon, what the Pokemon is conveying with their Pika Pika Pikachu. Um, and that is so much more insightful than just, just captioning the Pokemon literally. And that same philosophy should be considered when writing alt text. And speaking of philosophy, is your alt text enforcing your philosophy and brand? What I intentionally left out of my image description is the man in this photo is black. The alt text of this stock photo on the site actually describes this man as a project manager. But unfortunately, if we describe a photo as a project manager smiling and giving the thumbs up to the camera, many users are more likely to picture a white guy in a business suit. Kevin Germa, black human rights lawyer known as the deafblind woman who conquered Harvard Law due to her biographical book, has mentioned several times people assume she is white and encourages diversity declarations in all text as a way to help combat racism, sexism, and other forms of social impression, uh, oppression. Um, while not an, uh, an obligation, if this is important to your company's philosophy, you should be in the habit of describing things like race, gender, and even sexuality. Does your alt text effectively describe your image in as few characters as possible? Just be cognizant of people's time. Lastly, don't worry so much about creating the perfect alt text because it doesn't exist. Everyone perceives things differently and will interpret the image differently than you. Practicing alt text is about bringing others into that conversation. There's a saying that goes, if you're not intentionally including others, you're unintentionally excluding them. So just start consciously thinking about how you can start including people into the conversations you're initiating every time you upload an image. And with that, I have been Meg Miller. Um, I'm available on Twitter and I'm the lead developer for Accessicart and suddenly I've forgotten who I am. So I'm just reading this straight off the slide. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, how do I stop share? Hey, thank you so much, Meg. That was super informative. And I've been working with alt text for a long time, but I learned a few things there. Um, we had a question and you actually touched on it there in that final slide. And uh, maybe just to reiterate, the, the question one is, is there an appropriate way to write alt text for a person's image? Um, and then asking the same question, whether it's the stock image or an actual photo of someone you know, um, and the person asking the question says, I don't want to misrepresent that person or get it wrong. Um, so are there notes around that? So there is not a 100% answer for this. I, actually, the last time I gave this presentation, somebody asked that exact same thing. Um, it's always different. Um, and it always depends on the, the writers. For example, like headshots at a company. Obviously, you don't. I have that same Yeti mug. Um, at the same time, you don't want to have this the name repeated in the, because that's not helpful. So what do you do? Um, it is so hard to answer. You know, for stock images, those people know what they're getting into. You can describe them um, 
what whatever is important to what's going on um you can do the you can what i like to recommend to people is if there is something like a headshot being uploaded is to actually ask your employees to provide their alt text um that that would be my best recommendation um because that struggle to misrepresent somebody is real so when it comes to people you actually know my best advice is to ask them how they want to be described. If you're describing alt te uh, uh, stock images, um, general descriptions, whatever is important about the image. Um, and um, and I, I hope that helps. I'm sorry, I can't give you a 100% answer because this is just no, that's, not a question that's that has one. Really helpful, thank you. Uh, we've got about five minutes here, so kind of uh, see if I can get some quick questions to you. Um, does the screen reader also read the caption or only the alt text? It will read the caption. Um, that's why you don't want to have alt text and the, and the caption be the same thing. Cause then it just says it twice. So, um, you know, it, 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 it's one thing if they're different, uh, but just try not to make them duplicate. Gotcha. And how do you approach training content creators on this process? It can be complicated to make decisions, but as you say, best not to overthink it. So how would you kind of bridge that contradiction and training? When you find out how to train content creators to implement alt text, <laughs> tell me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just Fair. a pro uh, You will get better at alt text every single time you do it. Um, I, if you scroll back far enough on my Twitter, I don't have alt text on a lot of my images. Um, because it just wasn't the practice I was in, but I started doing it and then you get better at it and you start putting your own twist on it. It's okay to be funny. And I, like I said, in my slide, you can be funny in your alt text and really express who you are as the writer in your alt text. Um, but, um, it's just getting them to start. That is the, that is the thing. And, and as they practice, it's, they start getting more comfortable with it. Oh, you know what? I can start adding this. I can start adding that. I think this would be a good description for this image. How would I imagine this image if I were, if I were having it, somebody describe it to me? And those are the practices people start thinking of as they start doing alt text more. That's fantastic. Uh, one last question for you. So going back to an e-commerce store, if the alt text is the same as the product title, then screen readers are, you read the product name twice. Is that laziness or is that acceptable? Um, I mean, that would depend on if your, if your entire title, product title described the, the image because the whole price questions of what that looks so if you just have an orange couch in your in your product title that isn't describing the image properly because uh yeah like i said the whole this actually that slide is birthed out of this question that happened the last time i gave this uh so last time it was blue couch but like those details need to be told you're not going to say the gap between the couch and the product description i've never seen something like that before anyway that's the kind of stuff that needs to go into the alt text they already know what the product and what the product is called alt text is for describing what it looks like awesome thank you so much meg for sharing your knowledge and experience and thanks for everyone for attending this session uh, you can continue the conversation in chat or on social media using hashtag WP Ally Day and hashtag WPAD2022. Uh, we also appreciate if you go back to WPAccessibility.day slash feedback to provide anonymous feedback for our speakers on their presentation. And you can enter to win a pretty cool t-shirt while you're there. So stay tuned for Overlays Underwhelm coming up next with Adrian Roselli at 4UTC. And while you're waiting, don't forget to visit our sponsor page and grab virtual swag and enter for your chance to win great prizes. Thanks, guys.